or the Advocacy Council. Jonesboro's Community Radio Station. Your life. Your music. KLEK 102.5 FM. Good Friday morning, Jonesboro. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. Clouds and showers expected today, the high in the mid to upper 40s. Those showers will continue overnight. Temperatures rising into the low to mid 50s, rather breezy. Rain showers expected a Saturday. Gusty winds, temperatures falling through the 40s. And then it looks like it's going to clear out Saturday night, mostly clear around 30. Mostly sunny near 40, chilly on Sunday. Jonesboro, that's your KLEK 1 to 2.5 FM weather. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei is leading Friday prayers in Tehran in a rare move. Chinese President Xi has started a two-day visit of Myanmar, the first by a Chinese president in almost two decades. Russia's new prime minister is promising real change for the better after his appointment was confirmed by the country's parliament. And a British teenager convicted of lying about being gang raped in Cyprus has launched an appeal. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. KLEK 102.5 FM, good morning to you on your Friday. It's January 17, 2020. This is Community Conversations. Kira Wonder is in the studio with you. I am joined by Kabila Jones, host of Community Conversations, and joining us today as we continue our series of interviews of various candidates running for political office. We have Mr. Scott Ellington. He is the current prosecutor. Uh, prosecuting attorney for this area which actually covers the six county area he is also a candidate for circuit judge division 12 district 2 and i know i got that out of order but we'll, we'll get it right later and of course as always got to give the disclaimer klek and the voice of arkansas minority advocacy council we do not endorse support nor oppose any candidate for office nor was any compensation provided for this interview this interview is provided for informational purposes only but we do encourage each and every one of you to vote. Early voting starts February 17th, and Election Day is March 3rd. And, of course, on Election Day, you can vote at any polling place. You don't have to be at the one necessarily in your precinct. So we definitely encourage you to get out and vote. All right. So good morning to you, Mr. Scott. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm Mr. wonderful. Miller. I'm hoping this weather holds on <laughs> right. until we all get home. Uh, so we thank you for joining us today to share your information about your candidacy for circuit judge. And so, as with everyone, we would like for you to please give us an introduction of who you are and then transition to your legal background and experience. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, Scott Ellington grew up at Brooklyn, uh, graduated from Brooklyn High School, and then attended Arkansas State University where I uh, majored in agriculture, uh, cool. studied to be an ag teacher. Uh, I taught for a year and uh, realized that uh, that wasn't for me. Uh, if I stayed in teaching, I'd probably be on parole instead of uh, be a lawyer. It, 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 I, I couldn't. I couldn't be much of a. I, I just didn't have much patience with other people's kids. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, after that, I went to law school. Graduated from Uni University of Arkansas at Little Rock, the okay. Bowling School of Law now. Uh, then moved uh, uh, to South Arkansas, where I took a, a job and practiced there for a couple of years and then moved, worked my way up uh, and, and ended up in, back in Jonesboro, okay. uh, close to my home uh, as my, uh, my parents were getting older and uh, my, my wife and I moved up here. She actually uh, uh, is, is from Paragould, so it worked out well for both of us to be uh, back closer to our, our parents. That's wonderful. Now tell us a little more about what you do in your well, practice. <laughs> well, okay, so I, I, I've been a lawyer uh, uh, for low these many years, almost 30 years, um, and uh, I started just doing a private practice with, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a young lawyer doing what was assigned, primarily represented uh, uh, banks and uh, real property companies uh, doing foreclosures or selling property or title work and things like that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, gravitated over to being in private practice where I uh, uh, represented uh, it, folks that just came through the door and okay. uh, uh, did a lot of uh, 
some criminal defense, primarily it did a lot of domestic things, uh, divorces, child custodies, adoptions, uh, guardianships, and uh, uh, things of that sort, uh, just a good general practice uh, with occasionally taking on uh, felony cases and, and taking on misdemeanor cases in, in district court like traffic cases and DWIs and things like that. Uh, as, as time moved on, I had an opportunity to actually to join the public defender's office okay. and was a, a public defender, a part-time public defender for about four years. And uh, so I represented uh, folks, I had I had a year in Jonesboro and then uh, three years in Paragould uh, in Greene County uh, where I was the public defender there and uh, that was an experience because uh, I had, you know, it was a part-time position but he, he, I remember I had six months uh, there where I had a five trials during that six months and uh, they were pretty significant cases. We had uh, uh, where I defended uh, individuals charged with uh, uh, why felonies, which are uh, were sex cases or rapes, or uh, uh, I did not have a death case, but it was it, they were primarily uh, there was a, a backlog of those cases, and uh, so I had those, and it was a uh, and some serious drug cases and delivery cases at the time, uh, and, and and so it gave me an experience of being on the defense side and and having to face a jury on that side, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, uh, Brent Davis, who was the elected prosecutor at the time, uh, he, he gave me an opportunity to be a deputy prosecutor, and so I, I worked for him for a couple of years. Brent decided to uh, run for judge and was elected judge, and um, I, I ran then for the spot and, and, and was elected back in 2010 to take office in 2011. So I've been the, uh, the district prosecuting attorney now for nine years. Okay, well, so you have an ex extensive background and you have actually operated on both sides. I uh, have. Uh, well, mine has been the judge now, which you're running for, but prosecutor and defender. So you have some insight into what a judge would be listening for, looking at as far as details of the case. Oh, absolutely. In fact, when, I, you know, when I'm hiring, uh, 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 considering somebody, if I have a, a position to be filled as a deputy prosecutor, mm -hmm. I really like to have somebody that has been uh, on the defense side okay. uh, that that knows how to pick a case apart, uh, you know, to, okay. to before they put it back together and 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 prosecute it. So it 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 uh, uh, it makes it better for for the, the prosecutor to be able to see the case for what it how it view it in two different sets of eyes. You see mm -hmm. it how you would defend it or how you would prosecute it. I'm glad you brought that up, mentioning you would like for someone to have that um, defense um, experience as well as prosecutor. Do you feel that because you have that experience, that give, not to say gives you an advantage, however, because there are many others Makes you better running. prepared for yes. the position if you were <laughs> to be elected. Well, I think, uh, I think it, I, I, it prepares me, to, you know, to, to be elected. I think as, as the elected prosecutor, it, I, it's my experience that, as a as a defense attorney, uh, you can uh, you go th you you can sort out the wheat and the chaff pretty quick in, in what a, a client is telling you, uh, and and so you can sometimes just say okay let's cut the bull and and here's what here's what we're facing, and uh, so in in the in the prosecution side when you're looking at a case, uh, 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 you know a lot of times it it looks the same uh, it looks great to uh, uh, to the to the prosecutor the first time he reads through it, but then as as you start having to put evidence together and things together, it then you're sorting out and you're thinking, okay, this is gonna this there's a there's a little hole here. We got to get this figured out, and so it, it 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 is able to reach out to law enforcement and say, hey, here's a here's an issue. What's the how, what's the answer to this question? Okay, and um, if you are elected judge, um, I'm thinking about. We see on TV, whether it's a reality show or if it's a drama or whatever, right. how they portray what it's like in a courtroom. In re real reality, it's not as dramatic or as, you know, scripted. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you that, uh, by and large, most uh, days in court, it, to the casual observer, would be uh, pretty boring mm -hmm. um, if it, there's not a lot of excitement in, 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 in court that day. Uh, a lot of times 
even with motions and, and, and where there's hearing and testimony, unless you have a vested interest in it, that particular case, it's easy to not be as uh, uh, not be as in tuned in, and, okay. and it's not prepackaged in 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 a, a, a six and eight minute burst for you. Okay. It, it it carries on. So it, it, the day what you see on TV it glamorizes, but it's all it's 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 cut down. And uh, our our days now now we have had some exciting trials and uh exciting we, good or bad <laughs> well you know i mean when you hear uh, you know i like knowledge okay. and so I, I think it's exciting when you have an expert witness come from the crime lab that can uh, uh give you uh, uh can enlighten you on things like uh, one case that i had uh, several years ago uh there was a, a the the crime lab person had uh, some thing there was the the victim had been taped up and um, the the police found a roll of duct tape and so in the house and so the the crime lab we had somebody from the crime lab come in and and and, and say that this this roll of duct tape matched this roll of tape that that came off the victim and, and it could just, they count the threads and they count uh, uh, you know, it, it may have 600 threads in that roll of tape, <laughs> and uh, so it, it was. You know, knowledge is great, is exciting to me when okay. you, and so it made it so much better. But in in one case, we had a strangulation case where it, they thought that the guy had used his hands, but then the medical expert came in and he had he had magnified the the photographs, and uh, you could see uh, little plaits where he, uh, he had used a webbed belt, like like oh. somebody would wear a webbed okay. belt. And they, they had found a webbed belt between the mattress and box springs. Oh, wow. And, uh, but, but they just found a bit, the belt in there and because they thought that the guy had used his hands. And, and no, he, he showed us the, the photographs. And it was so, it, you know, it's, knowledge is, 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 is exciting when you can learn things on the stand. Okay. So speaking with us, uh, sorry to interrupt, but we've got a few Facebook uh, questions we need to get to. We are speaking okay. with Scott Ellington, candidate for Circuit Judge District 2, Division 12. Christy Mathis Conway says, I've worked with Scott on several projects here in the 2nd Judicial District. I respect that he is concerned about people that have mental health and substance abuse challenges. And she says, good morning, Skew and Con Q and Scott, excuse me. I ain't getting a good morning, but then again, I'm good not seeing on the live feed. But Minister Milton Culver asked, what will you do for people with mental health needs if elected, and will you be helpful or fill up doc, uh, I guess the DOC Department of Corrections more? So basically, he wants okay. to know, how would you, and it's a good question to ask um, because it's something that uh, has you know been in the news locally, how to address those people who, yes, they commit crimes, but it's because you know they may have a mental health issue or they're addicted to drugs um and their, their addiction may be rooted in some kind of mental issue or depression all right so uh let's talk about mental health uh, we have a mental health court uh i am the founding uh partner in the mental health court uh we did not have one uh before i was the the, the prosecuting attorney here uh we were it, a former sheriff uh proposed this uh to miss bonnie white when she was at uh, uh, Mid South Health, and uh, he his his thought was was that we have this certain group of folks uh, that find themselves in jail uh, ever so often and repeat uh, repeatedly, and uh, it's many times it's not it's because they're not uh, buying their or they're not taking their medication. It, it, folks that a lot of times are on mental health have mental health issues have medication that they could be taking that would help them control their behavior but they don't like the the effect that it has on them and so uh we found we got the mental health court and and basically it's it's to bring these people in who have committed offenses that are are a sole product of their mental illness and uh they are they're held accountable uh they have uh, court it, the court meets once a week they have to be there and besides that they see christy conway and others in the uh, uh, uh in the program christy is the director of that uh, program as, as a matter of fact and she uh, uh or she's the direct she's the support she she's kind of our coordinator shadun duncan is the uh, kind of the the head guy that that, that implemented it and and uh, oversees it but christy is one of the one of the administrators that assists in 
in that and then we have counselors that are involved in that as well but you know it, 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 the bottom line is is there's a whole lot of people with mental illness that are doing a life sentence 30 days at a time mm-hmm. uh, they get out and and they either uh, 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 use drugs uh, uh, self-medicate uh, or they they do something really uh, uh, just what we would think is stupid and and I don't know what they're thinking at the time but it's it's because of their mental illness and and it with this program it it holds them accountable um to take their medication to report to go through these classes to uh, to to anger management classes uh, domestic classes all these things are things that for folks to um to to hold them accountable and use pers- learn and use personal responsibility. Now, Scott, on top of that, you, you you mentioned the personal accountability aspect, but what about the rehabilitative aspect? Is the court seeking to help uh, help them? I mean, I, I, obviously, you got to help them accountable, but are they di- are they directing them towards resources um, that could? that could help them because it could be a case of yes they may have their medicines but maybe they're not maybe the therapist that they're seeing is just not getting through to them well uh, so that's why i call it personal responsibility in that uh, they they're, they're, these classes that they take that they go through it, it helps them find uh, 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 ways to not only get an apartment or get some place to live but to take care of themselves to feed themselves how how are they going to manage their money uh, how are they going to? So the it, all of these are part and parcel. If that's what, if I'm answering your question, mm-hmm. it, 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 the classes that, and I, I don't, I don't have an integ, I, I'm not involved in the classes. I just know what is reported to me okay. is that uh, that they have, they are trained to uh, independent living, uh, uh, to not uh, uh, to, to to abide by the rules, but also to be able to, you know, take care of themselves and and. Uh, uh, sometimes it's as simple as learning personal hygiene again, you know, or, or learn, rem- being reminded the importance of personal hygiene. You don't want to go, somebody's not going to get a job at Burger King if they haven't bathed in three days and they smell like it. So, uh, you know, and, and I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just saying that's that's important for, and so the, that's these classes that, that folks that you, things that you and I take for granted every day. Well, I actually suffer from depression, so I don't take it for granted. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it, it's. It, I, I wasn't trying to be. Oh no, I'm. I, I'm, I'm no. not offended at all. But I asked that question because it's something that I have personally battled with. Now, yes, I haven't committed any offenses that, or gotten any kind of trouble. But you know, I do understand the struggle. But this isn't about me. And we got sure, several sure, more sure. Facebook comments okay. that I do want to get to. <laughs> okay. All right. Shout out to Nathan Coleman and Don Mullenix. Terry Glenn Simmons says Todd Ellington is a fine and fair-minded prosecutor who uses his discretion in every case. He would be a great addition to, addition to the bench. And Minister Culver has another question. What will you be willing to do with people on probation that have a hard time paying probation fees and fines Do not due to not being able to hold a job and is waiting for SSI? Well, you know, as far as... Uh uh, probation uh, of fines and fees; those things, uh, judges can have hearings uh, on those, uh, and and there is a, a a level before somebody can be uh, revoked. They have to. Uh, uh, it's not just not paying; it's 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 refusing to pay if you have the ability to pay. Uh, you know, and and so there are uh, things that uh, there are considerations and hearings that can be had on that. And I'll tell you what, our community corrections service now that we have uh, has has stepped up the game. Uh, we ha- there's a lady that works there uh, now, uh, Tammy Zagala, and her job is to help uh, people on probation and parole get jobs. And she has helped over a hundred people in the last few months get jobs. Either she she is she's in sales basically. She goes out to these companies and says, I, "We'll sit. We have somebody that's on probation. Somebody that's on parole." I can't. I can't promise you that they will abide by all the rules. But I can promise you, if they don't abide by the law, they go back to prison or they get revoked. And she says, "I can tell you this: they're drug free today because we drug test them." Okay. Now, the, and so uh, she's had a, a, a great success rate of getting uh, uh, folks employed and a second chance to go to work and and do that as well. So we, you know, the the the, the program and the plan is to uh, uh, try to make people good tax-paying citizens and uh, have be able to provide for themselves and their their families as well 
Got another comment. I'm sorry, QD. These, these questions are rolling oh, in. Yeah. Mike Harris says, how many cases do your office handle each year? Well, our, our case, uh, our office files, uh, well, I have uh, 22 deputy prosecutors, so we, we handle thousands of cases every year. Uh, District-wide, we file about 4,500 felonies every year. Uh, or 4,500 informations every year. Uh, many of those have two and three felony uh, uh, counts in each one of them. So, you know, it, you know, seven, eight thousand felonies a, a year is not uh, uh, in, allegations are out there. And then we have uh, thousands and thousands of misdemeanors that come through that roll through on uh, uh, district court. And I don't keep a, I don't keep an account of that. Uh, in fact, our district. Uh, the second judicial district filed more felony informations in 2019 than any other judicial district in the state. And the second uh, district, judicial district, is uh, the, the sixth that's down in Little Rock, and, and they filed a, a, a few hundred less than us, and they have 44 deputy prosecutors, and I have 23, 22. All right. All right, so quickly, I'm going to read this comment, then I'm going to ask this question, but I'll let you answer the question on the other side of the break so it doesn't get interrupted. Christy Mathis Conway says, absolutely, the mental health court is not punitive. It's solely to divert from jail or prison to treatment. They gain coping mechanisms, a major treatment to include but not limited to counseling, medication, housing, peer support, community supervision, and et cetera. Treatment versus jail saves lives and saves money. Well, thank you definitely for that. And Don Muller, next question is, what are you going to do to help mental patients instead of letting the street crime unit put them in PTSD and you nor your office does anything to them except let the police file criminal charges against the mental patient? And Mr. Culver says, I would like to speak to you, Mr. Ellington, if I can talk to you personally as I can. All right, we're going to get ready to go to the break. We'll be back in five minutes, and on the other side of the break, we will get... Mr. Anton's response to Mr. Mullinick's comments. To keep, keep those questions and those comments coming. That's what we love. We love to have a good spirited dialogue with our candidates because one of these candidates is going to serve. So have a voice. We'll be back. This is Community Conversations on Kate, Kelly Kate, 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Are you overwhelmed by stress in your marriage? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Here are three ways to help your marriage feel less stressed. First, help more with the kids. If you're the kind who constantly delegates parenting responsibilities to your spouse, step up your game. Whether that means helping your son with his science project, washing your daughter's uniform before soccer practice tomorrow, or attending a parent-teacher conference. Second, be your spouse's teammate in parenting. Make sure you support your spouse when one of your kids is disrespectful or defiant. Third, create margin in your schedule. Don't overbook. Few things create more stress in marriage than constant busyness and weariness. For more on how to help your marriage feel less stressed, check out my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Made possible by the Kappa New Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. K N O M E G A 1908.com. Brought to you by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, dedicated to the purpose of achievement. Jonesboro Alumni at gmail.com. Jonesboro A R Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity on Facebook and Jonesboro underscore Kappa on Instagram. Hey, Russell Wilson here, and I know how important exercise is. It's essential. It's essential. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids stay active and play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids, healthy kids. But what this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60 because great things happen when we live united. Donate, donate. Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. 
My name is Meera. Many families have come to America for a better life. I advocate for these families with United Way to make the community stronger. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. If you're struggling with your mortgage, there's a free government program that offers expert one-on-one -on -one advice about your mortgage options. Call 1-888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. Calling all women and minority business owners as well as the general public. KLEK 102.5 FM presents the Women and Minority Business Showcase at Centennial Hall in the Arkansas State University Student Union. Live broadcast on KLEK and on Facebook, this is your opportunity to show what your business, church, or organization has to offer to the unique, diverse audience of KLEK listeners, supporters, and the Jonesboro community as a whole, or to just check out all the vendors in attendance. Register at KLEK kfm.org free admission to attend the klek women and minority business showcase is sponsored by the arkansas state university office of diversity and community engagement this event is a klek fundraiser the klek 2020 women and minority business showcase saturday february 22nd from 10 o'clock a.m until 4 o'clock p.m registration and other information is on our website www.klekfm.org KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. Meineke of Jonesboro is now Starks Auto Service, a full-service auto repair and vehicle maintenance center offering engine and transmission repair, brake service, tires, oil changes, and more performed by ASE certified mechanics. Starks Auto Service, 2813 South Caraway Road in Jonesboro, 870-204-7112. Starks Auto Service, jonesboro.com. The Office of Diversity and Community Engagement at Arkansas State University, under the leadership of Dr. Maurice Gibson, is a proud supporter of KLEK and is dedicated to finding innovative ways to advance their mission of creating a diverse and inclusive environment, conducive to educating, enhancing, and enriching lives, uplifting various and diverse groups on the A-State campus and striving to maintain Arkansas State University, a place that is inclusive to all individuals, regardless of origin, color, religion, socioeconomic status, or sexual orientation. More information about the Arkansas State University Office of Diversity and Community Engagement is available at www.astate.edu forward slash diversity and 870-972. 3081. Major Key Alert. Life is like school. You will be tested, so pass it. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchooled.com. Brought to you by Get Schooled and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK with our guest, Mr. Scott Ellington, current prosecuting attorney for this area and candidate for Circuit Judge District 2, Division 12. And it looks like we may have a phone call. I don't know if that's for... Uh, uh, that's... Well, this is done, so we'll take this call. I was going to ask this question. Uh, I was going to ask this question from the Facebook. We'll just take it live on the air. Hey, LK, you live on the air. Uh, good morning. This is Don Monix out of Jonesboro. How are you this morning? How you doing, Don? You're on the air. Uh, have you got uh, Scott Ellington still on with you this morning? He's still with us. Hello, Don. I, I was going to ask you a question um, from the live feed, but since you're on the phone, you, you, you're free to ask it yourself. I'll certainly ask you. Go ahead, Don. Uh, Scott Ellington, this is Don Monix out of Jonesville, Arkansas. Uh, I know you're running for you're the prosecuting attorney for the second judicial uh, 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 for the second judicial district, but uh, you're also wanting to run for a circuit judge. And also, uh, we're talking about mental patients and mental people. And uh, you, at the present time, have let uh, the Jonesboro uh, city your prosecuting attorneys from the city of. of uh, Craighead County, which you're their 
boss that come in on, let a straight crime unit come into my home, and me and a former chief of police myself, and uh, you let those people come in here and almost killed my son, gave him PTDS, he can't work, he's been to mental patients now, and he was a mental patient when they came here. You also let the ambulances leave, and the people, there's the mental cases in Craighead County, you've done nothing to help any of them. The only thing you've done is you've let the police department do whatever they want to do, and you've done nothing to help anybody around here with that. I'm trying to figure out if uh, if you're elected as a circuit judge, you're still going to have the good old boy system where if anybody comes in there in law enforcement, you're going to let them get away with anything they want to get away with because you're not going to do anything to them. And that's one of the questions I've got, and I think a lot of other people have got in Craighead County against you and the prosecuting attorneys around here. All right, well, Mr. Mullins, we definitely thank we definitely thank you we definitely thank you for uh, asking the question. Uh, we will now give. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go off the phone, but I'm going to let Mr. Ellington um, respond to your question. So again, thank you for your call, Mr. Mullins. All right, go go ahead and respond. Well, so uh, first of all, uh, my office is not present when anybody is arrested. Uh, my deputies are not. We would review the case files after they're brought to us. Uh, the, the incident that Mr. Molnix is referring to was prior to the opening of the new crisis center that uh, we have in uh, Jonesboro as well. So uh, not that that necessarily would be a factor in this particular case. Uh, this particular case, and, and, and I don't need to go into all the details uh, other than to say that uh, after we've reviewed the files and uh, reviewed the body cam videos that uh, were on, attached to the police officers when the arrest was made, uh, it was justified. Now, someone can have a mental illness and find themselves uh, still violating the law, and, uh, and, and violent crimes are, uh, when, when there's a violence in the crime, uh, there has to be steps taken, and, 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 and mental illness is not a pass on uh, violent crimes and, and to, for somebody to be able to commit a violent crime. And that, uh, in, the, in the situation that uh, was spoken of, in reviewing the uh, body cameras uh, uh, that was uh, that the officers were wearing, in reviewing the statements of the officers, uh, I, they 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 were appropriate and they were acting very well restrained. And uh, you know, it, it's one of those cases where, if as as an individual, um, the uh, uh, that who is personally involved in the case. Uh, uh, there's emotions involved in it, and I have I, I understand that, and I deal with that. Uh, but in and I dispute that uh, that we do nothing for mentally ill people. And and I think as Christy Conway told you, or kind of testified earlier, we work uh, 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 hand in glove with the with the mental professionals in our mental health court, in our veterans court. We we didn't have a veterans court until after I was the prosecutor. We we brought that in after we had the mental health court. Uh, so then we have a, 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 a drug, a, a sobriety court. That's for people who've had uh, two or more DWIs. And uh, they, so it's another way to try to bring them into court and, and, and hold them personally responsible at, at, and, and teach them responsibility rather than a total incarceration. And, and because locking somebody up for a period of time is not always the answer. Now, violent crimes, yes, but, uh, you know, and, and, and let's face it, the governor and uh, the, the legislature right now, they, they'd prefer us to reduce the number of beds in the prison. I, my, we, we put a lot of people in prison. We put a lot of people in prison uh, through my last nine years. However, uh, we also work with people uh, and, and try to, the, the low-level offenders, uh, you know, we hear people exaggerate about drug offenders finding themselves in prison for a small amount of drugs. No, it, it, somebody has to work really hard to get themselves put in prison for a small amount of drugs. It, it, it's, it's, it, first, they get, you have to go through the probation period, and then if they mess up, then they're going to get a, 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 a reprimand or a, a petition to revoke. Uh, and then we'll reevaluate the situation. There may be jail time on top of that. And, and then, you know, after the, if, if they continue to mess up, they can earn their way to prison. But it's not one of those things. And in the same way with mentally ill people, 
uh, people who suffer mental illness, uh, it, it, it is not uh, a, a pass to get to violate the law, but uh, uh, it, we take that into consideration in nonviolent crimes. However, the one that Mr. Mullinex was talking about, uh, it, it had some violence that, that could not be overlooked. Well, regardless of how one may feel, I mean, anytime you have something like that, it's definitely, you know, a sad and tragic situation. And, you know, these things unfortunately happen. But, Mr. Mullen, we definitely thank you for taking the time to call. We thank everyone um, who weighs in. Uh, and we, and one thing I do uh, admire that both of you all, even though this was very spirited, that um, both of you all were able to maintain some semblance of decorum and civility we also have a facebook shout out to your opponent scott will i appreciate you for checking in on our facebook live feed if you have a question for mr ellington you can give us a call at 870-277-1080 or you can leave your questions or your comments on our facebook live feed uh, i think i read this comment earlier but uh oh actually we got a few new ones so minister milton culver says um i would like to speak to you mr ellington if i can to talk to you personally if i can I'm sure you can call him at the prosecuting attorney's office and he will be happy to speak with you. Mike Harris says, thank you for taking the mature route. We appreciate your dedication to public service. Nathan Coleman says, Don called the cops and invited them in. The entire body cam video is available on the Jonesboro Police Facebook page for anyone that wants to view it. It shows why there were no charges filed against the officers. And well, Nathan thank you, a, Nathan. Yeah. He's a sergeant. Uh, sergeant. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a sergeant so, with the Jonesboro Police Department. So, okay. IQ, maybe I can hand it back to you now. So, uh, I guess kind of just to follow up, you know, we've heard from several candidates and judges that sometimes the the cases can get backlogged. And, you know, everyone has stated that they would love to see a little more efficiency in how things are handled in a case such as this. Um, because those of us on the outside don't know the entire process and timeline and how things flow and how things happen in the process it has to go through. So if you are elected, what can or what will you try to do to try to, in an attempt to not necessarily speed things up, to rush it, but to make it more efficient and flow a little more smoothly? Well, so as uh, as the prosecutor, we we have a, a certain number of cases and we have to, we ha we're obliged to, uh, uh, required to move those along and we try to do that and uh, uh, as, as uh, each case comes along, as sitting as a judge, uh, one thing that has happened is, is the legislature just added a new position. This is the position 12 that I'm, uh, that I'm a candidate for. So hope that, that is one thing to try to alleviate some of the pressure. However, you know, with our caseload being uh, like 2,400 cases, uh, current ca life cases per judge, uh, and, and then I know that in some uh, districts, some judges, uh, the, the, each judge in the district may have 400 cases on an active uh, caseload. We we have a, a, a vast number. We have you know Jonesboro is becoming a, a large city, and uh, you know, and it's not just the criminal docket; it's also the civil docket and the domestic docket and things like that that take up all that. So you know, it, as far as uh, setting those. Uh, trying to work in the timeline there i've heard this uh, uh i know you've heard the term administrative plan mm -hmm. yeah we've heard it uh, several and, times and so from the, different candidates you know, the, 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 the the body of judges will work to develop the administrative plan there's one in place now there'll be a new one uh, come along uh, shortly and uh so i'll follow the administrative plan and and work i'll give input but uh you know as being a I think I will have a better handle on uh, how things move than some uh, some folks because some folks don't, are not in court as much as we are and, and don't have the number of cases that we that we have to deal with. But uh, you know, this is going to be uh, it's, it's going to be a team effort, a team effort of twelve judges. It's not that that uh, Scott Ellington could do uh, this and make it work. Uh, it it, it and, and, as far as that goes, it's it's going to be, take a team effort to get the the district moving along, and and I think that with with that approach, uh, we can do that. But the truth of the matter is, is like I told you, uh, we file more felonies than any other district in the state. Felony informations. Uh, the next one, uh, the next district, 
uh, filed uh, a, a few hundred less, but then they have twice as many deputy prosecutors. If you want to move uh, criminal dockets along, you're going to have, you know, the legislature would have to put in more deputy prosecutors here, more public defenders. With every deputy prosecutor, you're going to have to have a, de you, you, the public defenders are going to come because that, though, even though uh, there are private attorneys, uh, there are many people in the legislature that feels that, that one uh, goes, if, if you get a new deputy prosecutor, you got to get a new public defender. And, and, but then it's not just that, it's also going to be judges. Uh, and, and then you've got trial court assistance and then you've got uh, a courtroom space. So, you know, the, the, that is all a financial uh, obligation that would be on the legislature. And it, quite frankly, financially, then you're talking about much more money than, than, than the legislature is going to want to invest in, in that right now. Roxanne Sweat asks, Scott, actually, this is more of a, yeah, it is a question. Roxanne Sweat says, Scott, my dad, Greg Sweat, deserves a chance in a diversion program. Please show mercy on his case. Minister Culver says, hey, Sergeant Coleman, and shout out to Andy Shatley. So, I want to, I can remember my question now. Sorry. No. Uh, goodness. Well, while you're trying to figure that, once again, we are speaking with Scott Ellington, candidate for Circuit Judge, District 2, Division 12. And, of course, Election Day is March 3rd. Early voting starts February 17th. Make sure that you step into that voting booth and vote for whichever candidate that you support. Of course, KLK, we do not tell you which one that should be. But we do provide these interviews so that you can hear from each one of these candidates and you can make that decision for yourself. So, Q, you got it now? Yes. So or do I need to blow the egg No. <laughs> no, we talked a little bit off air um, about how representation matters because the districts are so diverse. That's right. And so, one, what power do you have to hire the people you need? You mentioned deputy... Um, deputy prosecutors. Deputy prosecutors. Sure. So, one, what power do you have to hire, and then please let everybody know why you feel diversity is so important. Okay, so while we were off there before uh, before we even came on the, the program uh, to start this morning, uh, you asked me about my deputy prosecutors, and I told you I was giving uh, uh, some examples, and, and actually I have, uh, uh, I have three African-American deputy prosecutors. Uh, Curtis Walker was, was a deputy prosecutor in, in Mississippi County before I came along. He was a deputy prosecutor before I was a deputy prosecutor, um, and, and he, he, ha he represents uh, uh, folks, uh, our office in, in uh, the Blyville office in uh, the north end of Mississippi County, Chickasaba District. Uh, but then we had a, a new position uh, in uh, Craighead County and uh, come open, and, and I... I wanted an African American uh, deputy prosecutor. I believe it's very important uh, to have uh, uh, to represent the demographic, uh, and and I, it, you know, it, it is uh, uh, important to me. It may not be important to uh, you, but it's important to me. And uh, then we have. I also have uh, uh, an African American deputy prosecutor in uh, Crittenden County uh, when we had a vacancy open up there. Um, I had to cover court a little while till I could find somebody who would take the job. We, we were able to find uh, uh, the first uh, young lady came uh, from the Department of Human Services and we hired her and then after she uh, moved, then I filled that spot with someone else for a while and then that person retired and then I was able to find uh, another uh, deputy prosecutor who was willing to, he actually lives in, in another <coughs> county, but uh, uh, represents us in, in Crittenden County because I think it's important to represent the demographic of the folks that of, of the community. And, and to that end, uh, if if you have an opportunity, would you try to hire a Hispanic deputy prosecutor since the Hispanic population is growing and not just someone you know that can speak the language but also relate to their culture? Yeah, it, it, yes. Uh, when when you know spots don't are not. A, it readily they don't just come open uh, at the drop of a hat it, it requires uh, legislative approval or somebody to retire or to marry or move off or whatever happens so I don't get to create a spot for that but uh, if uh, and, and I had previously uh, looked into uh, uh, that the situation but you know again uh, uh, what I find is that uh, Hispanic lawyers um, 
are not willing to take a pay cut uh, to be a deputy prosecutor. We don't, the deputy prosecutor job uh, uh, has, has a set pay. And uh, there's a, you know, a Hispanic lawyers right now, it, with, the, with the circumstances the way they are, um, if they, the, my friend Melton De Jesus in Little Rock, uh, he is he is a, an immigration lawyer, and he he stays so wrapped up he has to farm out business and, uh, and get other people to assist him. So it's not it, it, I, that is one of those uh, situations where trying to find somebody to uh, in that demographic uh, is is very difficult. And 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 quite frankly, it's very difficult to find uh, uh, African American lawyers that w are willing to um, take uh, you know take a what they might be making more money elsewhere um, and so I've, I've had I've been fortunate to hire uh, a young lady who was at the Department of Human Services and then I hired another lady who, had, who was working uh, with a with an individual who got elected judge and then she uh, we brought her in as well and then um, one that was he had been practicing for 30 years and decided it was he, he was ready to uh, uh, step down a little bit and and he could take uh, a the job and work for us and, and not uh, not have to make the, the big money that he had been making before. All right. Um, so we got a couple more comments and a question. Tamika Anderson-Jones says, never again. I voted for him last election, and when I needed him, he never returned my calls ever. Nathan Coleman says, Minister Culver, hey. Tamika says, don't believe his lies. And Mike Harris asks, how can we address the growing drug problems in Northeast Arkansas? Um, so how do we address the growing drug problems in Northeast Arkansas is, is, uh, we have the drug task force. We have, uh, the police, Jonesville police department has the street crimes unit. Uh, it, it, it's still, uh, I think we're, we're working hard. Uh, you know, there was a bust out the day before yesterday that we participated in, uh, with, the the FBI, uh, Jonesville police department, Cricket County Sheriff's department, the drug task force. Uh, we're working together and, and, and to round up folks that were involved that had the, the federal warrants that were out on them. Um, so that, those are issues that uh, it, it's steadily uh, working to try to um, alleviate and remove those issues. I, my, my drug task force prosecutors, uh, if you take the number of, of felonies that they filed themselves, just the drug task force uh, uh, the, 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 the three lawyers that are out there, they filed more felonies than 25 other, or well, they would be fourth in the state, so 24 other uh, uh, districts. Uh, you know, they, they could be like their own little sub-district uh, of, uh, of in, in the grand scheme of the judicial districts in this state. So we, we are working hard to try to uh, do it but but it's it's uh, sometimes it's like the little boy with his hole in the, in the dam uh, trying to keep the water from flooding out all right um and i'll read this last comment and uh i'll give you the opportunity to respond respond on the other side of the break tamika says he doesn't work for the people a drugged out lady hit me in 2015 and turned my life upside down and she has never been prosecuted to this very day she took lives that day as well and he did nothing about it i'm just so very sorry that i voted for him do you want to just say a quick response, or do you want to just wait for the other side of the break? Well, I'll just tell you right now. Uh, I'll have to find out more details about that case because it's not coming to my uh, my brain at this point. And, uh, so I, I, I'm sorry that Ms. Harris feels that way. I'll see what I can find Ms. Jones. Out. Ms. Jones. Tamika All right, well, Jones. Tamika, he says give him a call, and he'll try to look up the case and try to get you some help. Keep those calls and those questions and those comments coming. We're getting ready to go into our next break. We'll be back in about five minutes and we will wrap up our segment with Mr. Scott Ellington. Candidate for Circuit Judge Division 2 District 12. Don't forget Election Day is March 3rd. Also coming up later today, we will live stream the debate between Senator Cooper and Representative Sullivan. Don't go anywhere. This is KLEK 102.5 FM. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. If you give gifts in the course of your trade or business, you can deduct all or part of the cost up to $25 for gifts to each colleague during the tax year. 
Incidental costs, such as engraving on jewelry or packaging, insuring, and mailing, are generally not included in determining the cost of a gift for the $25 limit. The IRS will classify as entertainment any item that might be considered either a gift or entertainment. If you give a customer or colleague tickets to a theater performance or sporting event, for example, you can treat the ticket cost as either a gift expense or an entertainment expense, whichever is to your tax advantage. As always, check with your tax advisor and search the irs.gov website for more information on tax rules related to cash and other gifts for business. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South. Offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. KLEK thanks Charles and Candace Mabry and the staff of Mabry Smokehouse for their support of KLEK and dedication to the Jonesboro community. Mabry's offers Texas-style barbecue, beef brisket, pulled pork, ribs, rib tips, chicken wings, smoked sausage, barbecue fries and nachos, sides, and desserts. Located 1504 Red Wolf Boulevard, Jonesboro. Open 11 to 8, Tuesday through Thursday, Friday and Saturday. More info, Mabry Smokehouse on Facebook. The Craighead County Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parade Committee will host the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Explosion Parade and Celebration January 19th and 20th, 2020. The Youth Explosion will take place Sunday, January 19th, 4 o'clock p.m. at the Jonesboro High School Auditorium. The MLK Parade will begin Monday, January 20th, with participants lining up at 9 o'clock a.m. and the parade starting at 10.30 a.m. at the Arkansas State University Armory. The MLK program will begin at noon at the Arkansas State University Fowler Center. More information is available via Dr. Ray Scales, 870-897-3076, Deidre Jones, 870-819-7301, or Reverend Curtis Wilson, 870-926-926. Five two three seven. K L E K one hundred two point five FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. Shout out to Tax Refund Firm, DBA Cool Cuts Texas, Tax Preparation and Holiday and Refund Anticipation Loans, 1411 Franklin Street, Suite 6, Jonesboro, 870-520-7470, 870-331-8311. Shout out to Always and Forever Grooming, offering baths, nails, and haircuts for dogs 3704 South Caraway Road, Suite 2, Jonesboro, 870-520-0925. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And we're back on Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with our guest, Mr. Scott Ellington. 
candidate for circuit judge district 2 division 12 and we definitely thank everyone who has checked in today so far let me see if we have any updated facebook comments because our facebook lives have been jumping today uh, we do not at the moment but you still got a few more minutes to get those questions and those comments in all right so um had kind of a extensive conversation today um just some of the final thoughts you know if you are elected as judge what are some things that you want to try to do immediately and then what are some things that to let people know what you have the power to do and what you don't but you can possibly advocate or out i'm not going to use what else you can advocate for <laughs> well uh, you know uh, first of all i think that uh we've heard from a couple of people that you know that that, that have uh, uh concerns uh, personal concerns and uh some of those originate with law enforcement to start with as opposed to the pro I don't get to direct the law enforcement to do one thing or another uh, as far as send out I can't send out Jonesboro Police Department or Cricket County Sheriff or the State Police to go do something I, I, we prosecute cases as the files are handed to us we evaluate them and then we choose either to prosecute or not prosecute we, that's making charging decisions uh, so that's that's where we are but I think that people that know me and and uh, most uh, uh, people know that we are. This office has been firm and fair, but tough on crime, and that's 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 where we are: firm, fair, and tough on crime. Uh, but so, as if I like to judge, I have the experience of being, of knowing where people come from, and uh, knowing how uh, uh, things are uh, move along in the system, and how it takes a while to uh, to to do that. But also, if they if feet are feet are being drug. Dra attorneys are dragging their feet um, I can call a halt to that and call uh, you know and, and say no we come up to the lick log it's time to to, to move this case along all right all right uh, let's see Mike Harris says thank you KLEK for hosting these series very informative and thank you to Scott Ellington for sharing a bit about what his office handles day in and day out sounds like a lot of responsibility public service is not always the most popular thing but it's one of the most needed and appreciative and Matt Pierce says most experienced candidate without a doubt hopefully after you know all of the elections are over the general all the way down to the general once that's over and people are in their respective positions um, we here at Kelly K would like to start bringing back those conversations so people can get to know who the person is, what they're running for, I mean, what their position is, and sure. just really break it down to as low as come denominator. <laughs> All right, we've got two minutes left. Any final questions or finally any final thoughts or shots? I'm, I'm sorry, caller, we're getting up against the end of our show. We won't have time to take another call. Um, but Mr. Ellington, any final, any final thoughts? Well, you know, I, I thank you for. Uh, inviting me to come on your show and and i appreciate uh the viewers that are watching and uh, uh commenting and, and 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 i i even appreciate those who have uh, uh, adverse uh, thoughts uh, it, because each each of these people is it, this is our country and where you're you're giving them an opportunity to to say something um you know we have been firm fair tough on crime i the the mental health court the veterans court the uh, sobriety court these are personal responsibility courts that we didn't have until i got to be prosecutor and uh, as and we worked with other judges and and with the mid-south health to bring those in and those things are something that are open-minded i get called all the time by prosecutors across the state asking about how we do the mental health court and how we do these things and uh, I invite them to come up and watch our staffings and watch our, our court proceedings. So those are things that I'm I, I'm I'm proud of our opportunity to do that. But then, you know, we we seriously we we prosecute a lot of cases. Not everybody goes to prison, but but a lot do, and and, and it's good and it's bad. I mean, uh, taking somebody's liberties away is 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 something that's the most severe, and it, we don't do it willy nilly. We 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 have a vast consideration and, and spend a lot of time on these cases and it's not one of those things that uh, we just uh, uh, do at a drop of a hat for no reason it's 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 important and justice is important and that's that's what that's what it's about justice all right Scott gotta leave it there thank you for stopping by the studio today and as always KLK we do not endorse support or oppose any candidate for office nor was any compensation provided for this interview it was provided for informational purposes only but we do encourage you to step into the booth and exercise your right to vote 
Election Day is March 3rd. Early voting starts February 17th. Coming up at 10 o'clock, we will have Mary Lyle Broadway. we got more candidates coming. Of course, we're going to live stream that debate between Senator Cooper and Representative Sullivan at 12. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes. This is KLEK on the 2.5 FM. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Broadcasting from the First National Bank Tower, this is KLEKLP Jones.